Hi, my name is Oksana and welcome to Easy Exposure, the tutorials about photography. In today's lesson we will be talking about Ta-da! Flash or speed light. This is the lesson a lot of you were waiting for. And in this lesson we will be talking about flash modes and also flash exposure. And more lessons still to come. So let's get started. First of all, let's talk about basic flash modes you can find in your flash unit. And the first mode is a manual mode. In this mode, photographer is the one who sets the power of the flash. The second mode is the auto mode. In this mode, the flash unit is the one who decides the output of the light. The way how it works, the flash unit releases a pre-flash and then it measures the exposure and then it decides how much light should be released to expose scene properly. Then the third mode, which is very popular and more often used nowadays with DSLR cameras, is TTL mode, which stands for through the lens metering mode. In this case, unlike in auto mode, the camera is the one who is metering the pre flash. It's the same, the flash releases a pre flash, but the exposure is metered through the camera lens and camera decides how much light should flash release for proper exposure. And force mode, which we're not going to talk a lot about at the moment, but it's good to know what it is, it's RPT mode, which stands for repeat mode. And this mode is used for repeating flash operation, so for multiple flashes, for example, for multiple exposures. Let's take a look real quick. Here I have a Speedlight SB800 by Nikon. It's connected to my D800 camera. And let's turn it on real quick by turning, uh, clicking on and off button. And at the moment it's in the manual mode. And we can change our modes right here. And manual mode, remember, means the mode in which photographer actually controls the power of the flash. So by pressing plus and minus, we can control power of the flash right here. So one to one actually means full power of the flash. Uh, one second means half power of the flash. And here also we can go by one third of the stop because this shows us full stops and this is one third of the stop right here we can change power of the flash like this. And also, as you can see, we have our ISO and aperture right here. And this is actually ISO and aperture which is set in our camera. So when we change aperture in our camera, it will be changing here. So from this, you kind of know already that flash power, flash exposure, is actually depending on those two criteria, ISO and power of the flash. The second mode is RPT mode. We're not going to talk a lot about this mode, but as you can see, you can also change power of the flash in this mode. And the next mode is actually TTL mode, TTL-BL mode. This, fla this flashlight has two TTL modes. One is regular TTL mode and one is TTL-BL mode. So what's actually the difference between those two modes? So in general, TTL, in TTL mode, the flash will send a little pre-flash, which is actually shown here, and then it, the light of the pre-flash will be measured through the camera lens, and then the signal will be sent to the flash, and the flash actually releases uh, the burst of light. So actually, TTL mode is automatic mode, but there is two different ones. And TTL-BL stands for balance. BL stands for balance. So what it does, if you have, for example, backlit scene and you need a fill flashlight to balance out your subject, which is, for example, backlit, with a background uh, which is lit by ambient night light, the TTL-BL light actually will balance those two, your ambient light and flashlight. 
but if you go to the regular TTL mode, this mode is better to use when flash is your only or main light source, that you don't have a lot of ambient light in this situation, TTL mode will work better. Also, you have exposure, flash exposure compensation in both of those modes, in TTL and TTLBL, which you can change by pressing plus and minus right here. So let's say you took a picture in TTL mode, which is kind of automatic mode because flash decides how much power to release, but your picture was dark, so flash didn't measure it correctly. So you can use exposure compensation and add more light by going to the plus right here. Or you see this was overexposed, too bright, you can go to minus. So you can, st even if this is automatic, you still can um, control it a little bit with exposure compensation, right? So the last mode is AA mode. This is like automatic mode where actually flash releases the uh, pre-flash and Unlike in TTL mode where the light was measured through the camera lens, here flash itself measuring the light. But why is it AA mode? Because this is aperture auto mode. And also uh, this is a default mode, default auto mode for this speed light. So what's the difference between regular auto mode and aperture auto mode? In aperture auto mode, Actually, your uh, flash will feel what, uh, or will know which aperture is set in the camera. But if you have just a regular auto mode, you are the one who will set the, the aperture for the flash, not the camera. But in aperture auto mode, actually flash will know which aperture is set in the camera. So this is about it, about all the modes in this flash. Here is something what is important to remember. Every picture you take with flash has two exposures in it. One exposure is ambient light exposure and the second exposure is flash light exposure. Our available light exposure depends on ISO, aperture and shutter speed, just as a regular exposure without flash. On other hand, speed light or flash exposure depends on, as well, ISO, aperture, but it's totally not influenced by shutter speed. You have to remember this. It's not influenced by shutter speed. And when you think logically, it makes sense, because if our, when, whenever our shutter is open, the flash fires real fast. And then it doesn't matter how long shutter is open, it can be open for an hour, it will not pick up more light from the flash, because flash fires really quick. On other hand, our speed light of flash exposure also depends on the distance to the subject, which our available light is not influenced by at all. So, just think that way, they both influenced by ISO, aperture but available light exposure influenced by sh also by shutter speed but our speed light exposure also influenced by distance to the subject and here you just have real quick review on how aperture shutter speed and ISO influence our exposure so the bigger the aperture opening the more light we get the slower the shutter speed the more light we get and the higher the ISO, the more sensitive to light center will be, so the more light we'll get. And for aperture and ISO, it applies for both, for our ambient light exposure or available light exposure, and also for our flash exposure. Let me show you on some examples how ambient and flash exposure influenced by aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. In this image, my friend was lit from the back by window light. There was a glass door behind her, uh, and there was, it was creating like a window light from behind. And also there was some light in the hallway, but there was not enough light on her face, so I had to add some light with a flash. Also, I would like to point out that this won't work, this test won't work 
when you have your camera on TTL or auto mode. This will only work in manual. Your exposure will be changing depending on aperture, shutter speed, and ISO only if you are in the manual mode. First, we will be changing aperture. And we, as we learned, as we just learned, ambient exposure and flash exposure are influenced by aperture. So, when I will be changing the aperture, pay attention to the exposure on my model and exposure on the background. So, first we shot it at f2.8, then at f4, then at f5.6, then at f8. And as you can see, as we change our aperture, both our ambient light exposure and also our flash exposure are changing. When I make my aperture smaller, both background and the model get darker. Now let's do the same test, but we, this time we will be changing our ISO. So I started with ISO 100, ISO 200, ISO 400, and ISO 800. And the same as with aperture, both background and my model lit by flash are changing. The higher the ISO, the brighter the whole scene gets. So ISO will influence both the flash exposure and ambient light exposure. And finally, let's do the test by changing the shutter speed. So I started at shutter speed 1 to 50th of the second and pay attention if I change my shutter speed what happens to the model and what happens to the background. Now we change our shutter speed to 1 1 25th of the second and 1 60th of the second and as you can see nothing happens to the exposure on the model but our background gets lighter and now 1 30th of the second and 1 15th of the second. As you can see, exposure on the model didn't change at all, but our background became brighter as we made our shutter speed slower. So as I already told you, the flash exposure is not influenced by shutter speed. Only our ambient in, uh, exposure is influenced by shutter speed. This technique is very often used by famous photographer Anya Leibovitz, where she often makes backgrounds very dramatic and darker. Of course, she uses strobes, but strobe works kind of the same way as a flashlight. The only thing, the strobe is more powerful. So she makes the background much darker compared to her subject, which creates this dramatic scene. Besides the fact that shutter speed doesn't influence flash exposure, you need to know another thing. You need to know about flash sync speed. Flash sync speed is the fastest shutter speed you can use when shooting with flash. Different cameras might have a different sync speed, but usually it's around 1 to 100 of the second or 1 to 50th of the second, so you have to check your um, camera manual to see what the sync speed in your camera is. So why can't we actually shoot faster than sync speed? Let me show you an example. The cameras actually have two curtains inside which are located in front of the sensor. And when you're taking your exposure, first one curtain is opening and then other one is closing behind it. Let's take a look. In this first example, we will be taking a picture with a sync speed or slower than sync speed. So, the curtain has time to open completely. When now the curtain is open completely, the flash fires and then the second curtain is closing behind it. Just like this. And as a result, we get the whole frame exposed. And now let's take a look uh, on the example when our uh, shutter speed is faster than sync speed. 
In this case, curtains will be opening and closing faster, uh, and the second curtain will be kind of following the first one. So there will be no moment when the scene is completely open, and when the flash fires, one of the curtains will be over the picture. So as a result, we will be getting photo like this. The part where the curtain was over the photo will be black. And this was actually more the case with the film cameras, because they will let you to set your shutter speed uh, faster than the same speed when flash is attached. The modern DSLRs will not even let you to go past your sync speed when flash is attached. But it can happen to you, for example, when you're using strobes, because uh, when you shoot with strobes, you also have to think about sync speed, the same as with a flash. Let's look at some examples. Just imagine you are taking a photo on a bright sunny day. Since we will be using flash, our shutter speed can go past the sync speed, can be faster than the sync speed, and the sync speed in my camera is 1 2 50th of the second, so I set my shutter speed to 1 50th of the second. And to get a good exposure, at shutter speed 1 to 50th of the second, my meter told me to set my aperture to f11 and I set my ISO to 100. And now let's add our subject to the scene. Uh, in this case it will be me. And uh, our subject will be backlit, so the natural light, the sun, will be lighting up the subject from behind. And because of that, our subject appears kind of dark. So if we take a picture without no flash, that's what we get. Our subject will be kind of dark. Some cases it might even look just like silhouette. Let's say if we were taking pictures during the sunset. Sunset is so much brighter than our subject on the background. So what we need to do is to add some flash to add some light to our subject. I will be using flash in a manual mode. Ideally, we would be measuring our flash for power with a light meter. But since a lot of you might not even have a light meter and uh, or might not know how to use it, in this case, I will not be using a light meter. But in my next videos, uh, I will show you how to use the light meter in different situations. So, how to do it without light meter? You can always try it out. Just test it out. Just start at the full power, and this picture was taken at the full power, and as you can see, I look too bright. So let's just try to cut the flash power in half. And as you can see, it looks much better, but still a little bit on the bright side. Now let's look use our flash in the quarter of the power, and I think I like this one. But let's try one eighth of the power as well, and also one sixteenth of the power and 132 of the power, just to see how the picture will be changing depending which power of the flash we use. And as you can see, our background stays the same because our general exposure is the same, but because we are changing the flash power, the exposure on your backlit subject, which is me, is changing. I think a quarter of the flash power works for me the best. I also want to show you other flash modes which can be used in this case or cannot be used in this case. Let's try to take this picture in TTL mode. And our uh, ambient exposure, our natural light exposure stays the same and we just took this picture just the only thing we changed is the flash mode to TTL. And TTL mode actually tends to overexpose photo when you use it as a fill flash. TTL mode is usually better when the flash is the main source which lets up the scene but not when it's a fill flash. On the other hand, TTL BL mode did pretty good job. Let's compare our favorite flash exposure in manual mode to TTL BL mode exposure. And as you can see, they are very close to each other. 
So now when we figured it out with exposure, let's see what else is missing in this photo. When you take a portrait, very often you can get, you want to get your background blurry, right? And to get your background blurry, you need to open up your aperture wider, so f11 will not give you very blurry background. You have to open up maybe to f4. But if we open our aperture to f4 at shutter speed 1 to 50th of the second and ISO 100, our image will be overexposed. So to get a good exposure at f4, we need our shutter speed to be faster. But we have this problem with our sync speed. The sync speed of our camera is 2 50th of the second. So what shall we do? Well, in some cameras there is a solution to this. Well, some cameras in combination with uh, certain flashes have a so-called high speed sync flash mode. And in this mode you can shoot um, using flash with a faster shutter speed than your sync speed. To turn your camera to high speed sync we go into the menu and then we go to custom menu signed by the pencil right here and then we go to bracketing and flash I hope you can see it the sign was a letter E and then we click on it and then we go to E1 which is flash sync speed and you will have to set it all the way to the top 1 3 twentieth of the second after FP and then click OK so we, we have it set to 1 3 twentieth of the second after FP but it doesn't mean that your shutter speed can only go to 1 3 twentieth of the second it will go even higher than that and when we look at our flash FP is shown next to every mode. This means that your camera and flash set to high speed sync and you can shoot at faster shutter speeds. Let's take a look at this image. As you can see I was using high speed sync mode because I was able to use shutter speed 1 1250th of the second which is much faster than my uh, same speed in my camera, right? And I used um, the power of the flash, which is quarter of the power of the flash, which I actually liked on our previous tests. But in this case, for some reason, I am underexposed. Our subject is underexposed. So why did that happen? And this is because while we're using high speed sync, our flash releases a lot of multiple bursts of light instead of one big one and those bursts of light are less powerful and the reason for that is because our curtain, our shutter curtain is opening and closing and covering up the image a little bit so the multiple bursts of light help to lit the whole image because if we would have one burst of light Remember another example where the curtain was over the image, our image will be dark. But because our bursts of light are less powerful, we get our image a little bit, our subject a little bit underexposed. So in this case, we have to add more power to the flash. So I used our flash in half of the power instead of the quarter of the power. And here I'm better exposed, right? But what if, for example, your camera doesn't have high speed sync mode? You can still shoot this photo at wide aperture to get more shallow depth of field. But you will have to use ND filters, natural density filters, which will help you to darken a scene when you put them on your lens. And there is different type of uh, natural density filters and we will talk about them a, a little bit more details in some other videos but that's what you can use so as you can see in this image I used a 4 but I still used my sync speed which was 1 to 50th of the second and I still got a good exposure it's because I used natural density filters let's compare the images I took uh, at high speed sync 
uh, mode and the image I took was a natural density filter. As you can see I had to use uh, more flash power for the image I shot with uh, high speed sync to get the same exposure as I got with natural density filter because uh, when we shot an not, with natural density filter we used our sync speed which gave us one powerful burst instead of multiple uh, small bursts of light which uh, we get from using high speed sync. And now let's take a look how distance to the subject influenced our flash exposure. And this has something to do with inverse square law, which uh, I'm not going to go into math of this all, I'm just going to give you a simple explanation. The subjects which are closer to the flash unit will be more illuminated than the ones which are further from the flash unit. And here I have a little diagram. The tree which is closer to the flash in the camera is one stop brighter than the one which is behind it. And when you see those numbers, 2.8 feet, 4 feet, 5.6 feet, 8 feet, 11 feet, don't they look familiar to you? Yes, you are right. Those are f-stops. So the difference between brightness of those trees is one stop of light. Let's look at the examples real quick. As you can see, the closer to the flash which sits on top of the camera I am, the more illuminated I am, the brighter I am, and the further from the flash I am, the darker I appear. Let's summarize everything we learned today. Today we were talking about flash or speed light. And we were talking about different flash modes. And there are four main flash modes. And those are manual mode, where photographer controls power on, of the flash. And there is also RPT mode, where you can um, release multiple flashes. And also there is two auto modes, and one of them is regular auto mode, and the other one is TTL mode. And in both of those modes, flash releases a pre-flash, which is measured, the uh, exposure of pre-flash uh, pre is measured, but in auto mode this is measured by the flash itself. Unlike in TTL mode, where this pre-flash exposure is measured through the camera lens. I think TTL mode is a little bit more effective than auto mode, but you can try them both out. And some cameras and flashes also have two different TTL modes, just a regular TTL mode or TTL-BL, which stands for balance. Regular TTL mode is better to use when your flash is only or main source of light. TTL-BL mode is better to use when your flash is a, uh, acting as a fill flash, where you have two exposures, where you have uh, your ambient exposure on the background with a natural light, and then you need to balance your subject with a flash. For example, when your subject is backlit. So, in this case, TTL BL mode will be better. And talking about exposure, when you shoot with flash, you have two different exposures. One is your ambient light exposure, and another one is your flash exposure. Your ambient light exposure depends on the main factors you know about. This is aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. Unlike ambient light exposure, your flash exposure doesn't depend on your shutter speed. It only depends on your aperture and ISO but it also depends on the distance from your subject to the flash. The closer the subject is to the flash, the more brighter the subject will be. The further from the flash, the darker the subject will be. Also, it's important to remember that cameras have a sync speed. The sync speed is the maximum speed you can shoot, the fastest speed you can shoot 
with your flash. And a lot of cameras have a sync speed of 1 to 50th of the second. But there are some situations where you can't get a good exposure at such a slow shutter speed. Let's say you are shooting in the midday as it was on, in our example and you want uh, your background to be blurry so you need to use wider aperture. So in some cameras there is a function which called uh, high speed sync. And when you set your camera at high speed sync, it lets you to shoot at faster shutter speed than your sync speed. But the difference between uh, your sync speed and fast uh, speed sync is that when you shoot at your sync speed or slower, the camera, the flash will release one strong burst of light. But when you shoot at faster shutter speed than, than sync speed at your high speed sync, you will get a lot of multiple bursts of light to let the scene properly while just the shutter curtain is opening and closing. In this case, your flash will be less powerful. You have to keep that in mind. Also, another workaround in that situation is to use ND filter, neutral density filter. And they look like this, there is different neutral uh, density filter. This one is flexible one, so you can actually change the density by ro rotating the filter. All right. And this is actually all for today, but there is more lessons to come about flash, and I will do a live shooting uh, where I will show you some examples how to use flash in certain situations. So stay tuned, and I hope this lesson was helpful to you to get started with your flash. See you next time. Bye bye.